The National Collaborative for Infants and Toddlers is an education and advocacy movement committed to ensuring that every child prenatal to three and their families have what they need to thrive. Our equity efforts have evolved from building more diverse advocacy coalitions to embedding equity within policies to funding campaigns led by organizations that center communities most impacted by racism and other forms of oppression. So uh, NCIT has been helpful in being a partner and collaborative, sharing information, being able to share resources uh, from different states and different initiatives that um, we can work into some of the policies that we're initiating in Michigan has been really helpful. Probably not any families and mothers that knew about the NCIT when it started. It's really changed within the last seven or eight months where we're really trying to bring parent and community voice into all of the decision making tables of this collaborative so today and tomorrow and having these parents in Washington DC side by side with advocates from around the country is a first. So doing work with the NCIT which is the National Collaborative for Infants and Toddlers doing work with them to focus on that prenatal to three that foundation it makes it opens up a realm of what could be for families and our infants and toddlers, and especially mothers, right? And making sure that they are also um, being protected. Well, the NCIT, what I love about it is that it brings together all of these different groups. And together, we're way much stronger than just each of us working individually. And so for us, you know, being able to participate and be a partner in this, what it does is it amplifies our voice. And you know, when you come to Washington DC and you're part of a much larger group, a visible group, it's a lot harder to be ignored. And the NCIT, I feel, helps to make that happen. I think the SNAP program does a lot to really address nutritional needs of, of families at all age ranges, but for particularly young children, for folks to have the access to those foods and those dollars in an ongoing way is really important. And this particular farm bill also would address some technology access needs to make getting access to those benefits easier. And we also support, of course, super nutritious SNAP benefits. Um, hopefully they can uh, come up with a resolution for it to be better. Uh, the system is broken and it needs fixing in a lot of, in a lot of ways. And hopefully this could be the start of that. The, the, so many children that come into care um, from families living in severe poverty. There was a little girl um, that was brought into foster care around age one. She wasn't sitting up, wasn't crawling, her hair had fallen out. Um, and now that actually might make me cry, sorry. Um, because she was so malnourished. I can't believe I'm crying on camera. And um, after entering foster care, and um, seeing her be able to secure the nutrition that she needs. Um, her hair grew back. She was able to catch up on those um, developmental milestones. And it was so phenomenal to see. That's very important for them to see economically where we stand right now. We paying $5 for a loaf of bread. We paying $5 for gas. We paying $5, but Ain't no paychecks going up, so like they need to really take these things into account in a real life situation right now and what's going on in the economy and in the foreseen future because if we paying $27 for some eggs now, in about a year, I don't see them coming down. Right. So it's like, you know, we at the end of the day, we still had to help families because we can't Live. I believe they're going to be helpful to be able to explain to them the needs and how important it is to keep this bill going, to make the changes that need to be made. They're going to help the families. I think this collaboration helps each other with being able to bring a united voice coming from all these agencies supporting each other, having parent leaders who are here to share their experiences and speak to legislators about how important the Farm Bill is and keeping those SNAP benefits available to families to ensure that um, our smallest children are getting the best foods that they can. 
I think it's exciting to have people who care about infants and toddlers coming together on behalf of infants and toddlers. And the organizations that are part of the NCIT are not all here because they work on nutrition. Some are child care organizations, some are early care education, some work on health care, some work on other issues, but we've chosen to all really throw our shoulders behind nutrition for young children and families. So that's exciting is to have all of these organizations saying this matters to every baby in this country. And we're going to work on the farm bill whether we had ever heard of it before, done anything on it before, they're here and they're showing up. That's the point of the collaborative. We will take anybody who likes infants and toddlers and cares about young children and families, they are welcome to join the NCIT. They can join as individual advocates, their organization can join, they can join subcommittees. We want everybody, it's an open tent from coast to coast. All are welcome. Investing in the health and well-being of our mothers and children is not only a moral imperative, but a strategic choice that shapes the very foundation of our society. By prioritizing prenatal and child health, we nurture the potential of our future generations, building a healthier, stronger, and more prosperous world for all. Let us come together, advocate for change, and ensure that every child from the moment of conception receives the care, nutrition, and support they all need to thrive. Because when we invest in their health, we invest in a brighter future for all of us. Mm -hmm.